Hello again. Thanks for joining us. I'm Tony Perez with Opticos Design, and I'm on the Santa Rosa team here and uh, here with you today to talk about session five of six about form based codes. And today's session is about articulating physical character through building types. Uh, so uh, thanks for joining us today. Building types are a really great tool, but they are helpful in uh, certain situations and maybe not as necessary in other situations. So let's talk about what they do versus uh, what regular standards do uh, without building types. On the left-hand side, you can see the, um, the allowed maximum height, width, and depth of the building. And another way to say that is the maximum zoning or building envelope. And uh, the building can um, go anywhere in that volume or all the way up to that. And then uh, it gets designed uh, through the process. On the right hand side, you can see the same size lot um, and uh, that L building fitting inside that building envelope on the left, but being far more articulated. And I'm talking, not talking about the architecture, I'm talking about the L and the massing of it and the size of it uh, as distinct from the more general shape on the left. And so in some situations you might say, well, the, the, the shape on the left is fine. And so we don't need any more information than that other than the design of the building, of course. Uh, and so in that case, you wouldn't use building types. But in the case of the right, if that's the expectation about that kind of shape and footprint and, and um, relationship to the street, then it might be in your interest to use building types to further shape the building envelope. And you know, comparing the building type approach um, with conventional zoning, you know, uh, there's a, um, a really prevalent practice of using floor area ratio or FAR. And you can see here in this diagram um, how that is used. On the top of that yellow bar are, is the height of a building in one, two, or four stories in this, in this example. Uh, and on below that yellow bar is what it looks like if you were looking at that building from above or in plan view. And so you can see that the floor area ratio of 1.0 uh, can mean a one-story building covering um, the site entirely, except for setbacks, or it can mean um, half of the lot is covered um, with a two-story building, or it can mean a quarter of the site is covered with a four-story building. And so, you know, this is a very um, well-known practice and a lot of people really, a lot of practitioners and planners really like this approach because you can quickly calculate how much square footage is allowed on a property. But if you're a neighbor or, or, or someone else that, uh, in, in the community that is concerned about what might happen next door, this is not a very uh, helpful system. And along with that, the density approach we talked about early in this series is also not very helpful. Again, this is that comparison we showed earlier about a three-story building longer than you can see in the photo on the right with 49, building, 49 units in the building and, um, and 30 units to the acre, and then um, a five unit two-story building uh, with 29 units to the acre. So again, very, uh, uh, very prevalent uh, practice of using this metric and the FAR metric but in terms of what the form uh, that these uh, metrics produce, uh, it's not predictable. It's not something necessarily uh, fits in with what is already in the neighborhood. And then just going back to this idea of the building types and that the two categories we talked about in the, uh, in the building types uh, session of this series, the block scale buildings and the house scale buildings. So we're gonna take that forward and, and uh, talk a little further about each of these types. And, and so in the house scale category on the left here, we're gonna focus on that. And in the house scale category, uh, it is the category of buildings that are the size of houses, small to large, whether they have one unit, many units in them, um, units and, um, and non-residential space, whatever they have in them. And we're talking about the scale, not the use. And so these buildings um, also uh, have um, separation between them they tend to be detached with front and side and rear setbacks uh, and so that that is their common trait among all the types and then there are different types within this category as you can see on the screen there so let's look at those 
looking from the, the left to the right here, um, you see that we, we categorize houses in two, two varieties, the large and the small to medium. And then there is the duplex, uh, and sometimes that's side by side or stacked. Uh, you can see that the multiplex uh, building with three to six units in it, um, again, is that house scale, very good example there on the right uh, of a house scale building with six units in that case, or in the bottom left, you know, a cottage court where they're individually, um, they're detached cottages, uh, one story typically with a two story um, building at the rear of that, um, of that type of, of project, um, not always, but typically typically. Um, and then um, the courtyard building where there are flats and townhouse um, type of units arranged around a courtyard uh, or a series of courtyards. And then the multiplex large. So if you look at the top right, we break the multiplex into two varieties. The small, which is um, about six units, and sometimes a little more. Uh, and then the large, in this case, seven to 12. And sometimes that goes a little higher also. And then the townhouse, um, an array of three to four, sometimes a few more, maybe five or six uh, units in a row, again, to, to resemble that house scale size uh, in height and in width and depth. And then let's talk about those individually. Here's the duplex side by side, as its name suggests, these are two units side by side, as opposed to the current practice of gluing two houses together that are much bigger than a house would be on its own. Uh, so it's important to distinction between the house scale and then houses being put together. Uh, here's the cousin of the of the, the house, the duplex side by side, the duplex stack. And as its name suggests, um, you can see the stair and the examples on the left and the right going to the top unit. These are flats, one flat above another. And then the cottage court. Uh, some regions call this the bungalow court, uh, as in where this photo is from. This is in Pasadena, California, and the term bungalow court is used in that community. Maybe that's how you know it. Uh, but again, the, the individual cottages arranged around a garden, um, usually with a, uh, a taller building at the rear. In this case, that taller uh, building has three units in it. And then the multiplex that we talked about, here's the small, I love this example from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. It has five units in it. When I first saw it a couple of years ago, I thought it was a house. Um, it was a neighborhood of houses and much like Missing Middle um, occurs across the country. This is the five unit multiplex in a neighborhood of houses. And then the, um, the cousin of that uh, multiplex small is the multiplex large. And this one um, has 12 units in it and you can see it's much longer but it still has that two stories um, with that occupied attic space. And then even from left to right, end to end, you know, this is the largest house that you might see in your town, but it's still house scale. Courtyard building, as, as the name suggests here, the units are arranged around a courtyard um, and that courtyard is open to the street in this case. Um, it, it often, to maintain that, that smaller house scale, Often, uh, the, the, a big uh, component of that is, is the fact that the courtyard is open to the street and you are uh, visually uh, perceiving and reading the two volumes of the building on the left and the right, as opposed to a solid volume, uh, like on the back. And then the townhouse, uh, as we were saying here, this one has four in, in a row, an array of four, and that is maintaining um, that large, um, the large end of house scale, as you saw in the multiplex large, they're almost about the same size. This is just two stories, um, you know, with a smaller, with a smaller, uh, slightly smaller footprint. And then the other end of the spectrum of building types, the block scale um, part of the, the spectrum. Again, these are buildings that are individually or collectively as large as most or all of a block. So. The, this end of the scale of building types, uh, the block scale, and is is a little different than the house scale, and in the sense that um, there are a couple of these types that, that might be relevant uh, in the study area, and um, others that wouldn't be. And so we're still in the process of determining that. I think it's safe to say that the tower is not uh, 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 
probably worth considering in, this, in the study area, but there are others that might be. So we just wanted to show these to you and uh, make you aware of them. And it, you know, I think it's also interesting to point out that the, how we broke down the other uh, building types into two varieties, you can see that happening here with the Main Street. There's a small version and a large version. Um, so you, again, articulating physical character through building types and then taking those building types and um, breaking them into uh, two varieties. Everything that we've been talking about today either fits in the block scale or in the house scale end of the spectrum. And it's, it's, really, it's really just a, a very fun to think about it this way, to say there are many building types, but there are two categories. And you can talk with your friends, you can talk with your, your colleagues, um, you know, your neighbors and say, hey, you know, let's first identify, are you talking about house scale buildings or are you talking about block scale buildings? Oh, how scale? Well, are you talking about the fourplex? Or, and you can go into it that way. And it's a much more articulate and fun way to um, talk about it, understand it, and then uh, ultimately deploy it in your community through uh, vision and standards. So thank you very much uh, for being with us today. And we look forward uh, to seeing you the next session and uh, hearing your questions and comments. Thank you. <laughs>